So we met this morning, didn't we? Uh, no, Weren't not you in really. The, uh, with no. the, the print press? No, I wasn't. it's called. You, uh, you sound like you, you're familiar with this kind of. You've gone to these before? Oh, like, uh, I would have, I almost hesitate to tell you how long, 15 years. No, but I mean, this kind of setup, I've never seen anything like yeah, this before. Yeah, 15 years. No, when you pop in, you get your own little tape. It's like oh, yeah. visiting Santa Claus. Right? You know? <laughs> you're really, How are we rolling? Where Santa have, huh? <laughs> are we rolling? Okay. Well, Martin, I just mentioned to you that I've been doing this nigh on to 15 years now, and you and I have never met, and I don't know why. I don't either. Because you seem very agreeable to do this sort of thing. But anyway, I am happy to meet you under these circumstances. I'm delighted. Thank you. Magnificent portrayal in Gandhi, a movie that um, is an epic, a movie that 20, 30, 50 years from now, I'm sure people will look at and talk about. And if we're all it. around by then, yeah. I, yes. I think we'll look forward to it. <laughs> you, of course, play a journalist, and mm -hmm. he's a composite of yeah. several real journalists. American journalist, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe it was different in those times, but I don't think so. Um, Normally, journalists would uh, go to a man like Gandhi, and uh, they'd really be probing around, trying to find the warts, as it were. Mm -hmm. And yet, your portrayal of this journalist is a man who becomes totally enamored of the man, mm -hmm. of Gandhi. Mm -hmm. um, Martin, I know the kind of actor you are. You don't just fly by the seat of your pants. You really get into things. How did you arrive at um, this journalist having this kind of admiration for the man? Mm -hmm. Well, there were the, the character I play is named Walker, but it, it, the name is fictitious. He is, in fact, a composite of, of four or five American journalists uh, that followed Gandhi for uh, different periods of time. And uh, the, the one uh, 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 journalist that impressed me so from his book was a fellow by the name of Vincent Sheehan, who was a foreign correspondent for many, many years uh, overseas. And the oddest thing is he knew Gandhi for the least amount of time. He met Gandhi on the 28th of January, 1948. And of course, two days later, Gandhi was assassinated. But the two days this man spent with Gandhi, interviewing him far into the night, spending time with him at the prayer service each evening and so forth, and standing just about 20 feet from Gandhi when he was actually killed in the garden of Bela House on the 30th of January, 1948. This man wrote a book called uh, Lead Kindly Light, which is a biography of Gandhi. And by the end of it, this man comes to a better understanding of himself and an acceptance of his own spiritual uh, reality. In short, he goes away from India and his time with Gandhi believing in God. And he was a very cynical reporter who followed the Third Reich, and he'd been with the, uh, the Spanish-French-Moroccan uh, War. He'd been in China at the Revolution. He'd been in the Soviet Union. He'd been everywhere. He was in Jerusalem at the first uprising. He'd seen the whole world blowing itself apart and reported it as, as a journalist, stationed in Paris primarily. Uh, and to have this experience with Gandhi two days, and he came away believing in God as an extraordinary <laughs> uh, uh, turnaround in his life. I based my character mostly on this Vincent Sheehan. The name is coincidental. It's not spelled right. It's, it's similar pronunciation. He's dead now. He died in Italy in 1975. But th this man's book made the deepest, strongest, and most lasting impression on me. Uh, and uh, I can only recommend it uh, to anyone that wants to know about Gandhi from a Westerner's point of view. Uh, no. Martin, you yourself must have had somewhat of a, for lack of a better term, religious experience with this film. Uh, you donated uh, your salary to yeah. charity. Yes, I did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to whom did you donate it? Well, there were three uh, charities that I, I chose. Uh, I wanted to leave some of the money in, in India, so I, I donated about a third of it to Mother Teresa's uh, organization there which is the Missionaries of the Poor. Uh, the largest part of it went to an organization called Concern, which literally feeds the hungry around the world in seven different countries. Uh, and the last portion of it went to uh, the American Friends Service Committee, who are the, the Quakers uh, in America. All these organizations espouse the Gandhi uh, philosophy. 
and the money was given by the production company, Sir Richard's company, in the name of Mahatma Gandhi, uh, not my name. All I did really was contribute my time to the film. In exchange for that, they made these donations. But what made you decide to do that? Well, it seemed to be the only way to go. Gandhi had taken a vow of poverty. He, he lived in reality a very poor man. And I didn't, I couldn't conceive of myself making uh, money off him, off his life. I felt that I had to give something back. I think you get more the more you give, you know. And it just seemed that the natural thing to do. I wasn't the only one. There were several other players that made uh, donations to similar charities, you know. Martin, had you ever had the opportunity to meet and talk with Gandhi, what might you have asked him? That's very interesting. I never would have conceived of such a thing. The closest kind of character I've ever met uh, in that regard would have been Dan Daniel Berrigan. I did a film with Danny last, uh, last uh, summer. And as I understand from reading about Gandhi's character, uh, they have very similar qualities. I don't know what I would have asked them. Uh, just to, what gave them their courage, I guess. I think I, I personally think courage is the first virtue. I don't think you can do anything without courage. Gandhi was certainly courageous, and Daniel Berrigan is, is our answer to Gandhi, I guess. Uh, I, don't, I, I can't imagine what I would specifically ask them outside of where'd you get your courage, you know? No one else, you know. Well, Martin, you give an absolutely splendid performance, another splendid performance, I should say. And uh, I know the film must mean a great deal to you from everything you're telling me here about I, I'm it. I'm very proud of it. Just to have been a part of it, you know, is just, for me, is, is a, a great blessing. Thank you. Yeah. Very nice to Thank talk you with you. Thank you very much. Nice talking to you. Okay. Very nice. Okay. I'm going to sit uh, over there so you can look at me. Uh, that okay. isn't really necessary. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. And just, I'm so getting you a, an, an open area in the back. Okay. That's what I'm working with. Yeah, okay. Uh, and then if you will just crop the notes out and shoot, you know, just so that the notes are out. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'll do some uh, reactions first. Okay, sound for questions. Martin, if you ever had had the opportunity to meet Gandhi, what might you have asked him? To whom did you donate your part of the earnings? Let me repeat that. To whom did you donate your salary? Why did you do that? Okay. Was the film, for lack of a better term, somewhat of a religious experience for you? Okay. I think that'll do it. Thank you. 